Welcome back to the Ralph Engelstead Arena, Grand Forks, where the Golden Gophers have a 5 to 3 lead over the Fighting Sioux after outscoring them 5 to 1 in the second period. Drop of the puck, we're underway. And here is Dylan Mills from Minnesota to shoot it in. Mills, here after the fact, was just given an assist on Minnesota's third goal. So there are uh, points flying all over here as Miskovic dumps it in. Hale back to get it for the fighting two. And it's loose to, to Weibel. He nearly poked it in front. And on the far side of the rink, Ryan Beta gets it out of the zone and down the rink. Mills back to get it. Jeff Panzer in on the four check. Now Mills sidestepping Beta. His pass off the stick of Patoni. Brought back at center ice. Here's Lundberg. Ryan Lundberg with a backhand. And it rolled up the arm of Hauser and then over back of the net. Mills. Kowalska. Westrom to center. Chris passing now over to Patoni. Drops it on the rail. Long shot by Westrom. Rebound for Patoni at the outside. Wrap around try in the air and there's Collar. Boy, Green oh. had a good chance. I thought he was going to put that in. I don't know where it went. He didn't have a lot, a very good angle, but I still thought he had it. He was really looking forward to playing here, to say the least. Back in his hometown, Grant Patani. If you're not with us in our Sports Connection show, we told you about this guy out of Grand Forks, who was the first non-Minnesotan to play in the Golden Gopher lineup. Since 1987, when Steve McSwain and John Blue, the goaltender, were in the lineup. Wasn't quite as close as I thought. But no, it wasn't. Was kind of tough behind the goal line there. But I think he's going to get one yet. Long shot. It's off the pad. of Kohler. Kohler turned it away again. Launch it in the air. It'll come down. Ooh, I thought it crossed the line before Hauser touched it. They waved off the icing, however. That was close at the uh, goal line there. Now, Gophers will just hope that they can get it out of the zone without any damage. Back to Missouri. Long shot, hit a body, and it caroms off of Kowalska. Back into North Dakota territory. Polar way out of the net. Boy, he's a short little guy, isn't he? But effective. But effective. But effective. And it's back out at center. Dory wrapped off his stick by Mills, but he fights right back to get a shot up. Nice rush up ice by West Dory. Kowalska, pass to center. Westrom after the puck along with Stiklov. Westrom a long shot, glove catch by Kohler. And he'll hold on long enough to get a whistle. This game has been so busy, I'm happy to say I haven't had, haven't had time to think about the trivia question. Therefore, I don't care if I fall on my face on this one. But who holds on our Tires Plus trivia? Who holds the WCHA record for penalty minutes in a season? Oh, you know, we saw Bill Butters today. Let's throw yeah, his name into the mud here. That's probably a good, good pick. Jim Archibald. Well, it had, North, it had the right Yeah, <laughs> we should have figured that that's the way it was going to go. However, I would not have guessed Jim Archibald if he gave me all night tonight and all night tomorrow. Sneak off behind the net. Pass to flex right to Mills. He had to react in a hurry. Martin back to get it. And they shoot it around. Be back out to center. It's so important in this little rink to run just a split second interference. O'Leary got it to center. It'll be grabbed now by Martin. Pass to the line. Tate gains the zone and he ran into Schneeklock. Stepping up Miskovic, but he couldn't get to it. Mills. Tate. Back to Mills, to Weibel, knocked away from him. Off Weibel's skate, O'Leary plays it in. Coming up on the three-minute mark of the period. Fighting Sue making a change on the fly. Mills gets it to center ice, it's knocked out of the air, however. And flipped back to the line, Filling couldn't control it. Here's Miskovic, but Roach takes it away. And then it's dumped in from center ice by David Hale. Mills leaves it for Martin. Martin playing it up off the boards, and it's out at center. Good job by David Lundbom, and now Travis Roach back to control. Hale, Mills will go after it. Took a little bit of a long route to get to the puck, and that gave it just an extra half second to get across the line. Icing against North Dakota. Minnesota five, North Dakota three, back in Grand Forks after this. 
See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Well, there's a guy you feel for. Minnesota's Eric Wendell. The team almost scored, but he's watching from crutches. Out with a buggered up knee for the weekend. Panzer, a goal to pull him with one. He's so deadly. Jeff Panzer. Perfect example of, I thought we had a goal. I thought Grant Fultoni had an empty net. They were left all alone in front of the net. Eric Weston and Grant Fultoni, and they come down and get it looking like an innocent play and just throws it at the net and they get a goal. It's just, that's a real backbreaker. Panzer, the captain, is eighth of the year, 62nd of his career. Here it comes, Reed. You just can't relax. You've got to guard that center of the ice. That's, your, like I said, the prime real estate. Can't let the guy come down right down the throat and let a shot go. Now we were talking about Jeff Tafe sniping a couple of them here. There's a, there's a sniper for you, Jeff Panzer. Yep. That was a laser-like shot. Money player. 3.45 the time and Panzer's goal makes this a one goal game. Trevor Hammer cross rink to Travis Roach. They'll have two assists on that one. Beta will get one. And the other assist to Chad Missouri. Tafe at center ice, he'll come back for it. Pass picked off by Spiewak. Out taken away, O'Leary had a chance to take it away. And O'Leary tangled up pretty good with Jason Noterman on the far side. And a little push needing to shove over there. Jeff Panzer left alone in the slot. Pulls the fighting Sioux within one. You can see the, the surges both these teams make, and Gopher's been having the, the bigger or the longer lasting surge, but into the third period here, you, you really got to get into a groove and keep that puck deep. Some of your best defense is just playing deep in the offensive zone and not letting them come down the ice. And I just think we relax again just a little bit just after we miss that great opportunity, and then, that, like I said, ends up in your net, and you're back to a scramble again. I have a feeling that Alaska Anchorage has exceeded its season average in goals per game. They beat Wisconsin five to three in Madison. Madison, a little trouble. Yeah. Madison's a little disorganized. Scramble and Lundbeck had a whack at it, but it wouldn't go. Now to center ice. Big check thrown as Scarper gets the loose puck and gets a shot off. That was Nenovich who dropped Eureka, and then he dropped Eureka again away from the puck. There will be no penalty. Or will there? Nope, there will be no penalty. Boy, Nenovich. He just did lay two good body checks, yeah. a hip check, exactly, just down the boards. Guy tried to squeeze by on the boards, and he come over with that hip, and there's nothing harder than a guy's hip against the boards. That's just a great body check. And now here, roughs it up some more with Eureka and drops him. Got away with it. And Rico was looking for a little bit yeah. of a dive. All right, I found it. Alaska Anchorage averages 2.8 goals a game. Probably less than that on the road. But they score five in Madison tonight to win. Five to three. When's the last time they won in Madison? Did they win a playoff game there a year or two? Oh! in the span of a minute 15. Travis Roach picking up his fourth point tonight. Here he comes across, turns around, lets a little wrist shot. Everybody's going down. Adam is, is just a lot of traffic in front of him. Again, our guy gets you know knocked down in front, and you got to clear the front of the net, but he's throwing it at the net, hoping the bodies go through. I think Eric was tripped from behind, actually. But Boy, that's, Roach will get the goal. David Lundbaum, the freshman out of out of Roseau, was the interference in front of the net. He was the screen. Boy, what a game he's playing. He's just a freshman. And the Lundbaum, here's a Lundbaum shooting, and it goes over top of the net. 
We, we just uh, we just got done with the Panzer. Or we're going to get done with the Panzers, Jay and Jeff, and the Lundbums are going to pick up right where they're going to leave off here. The goal will go to David Lundbom, I guess. We'll straighten this all out in a moment. But this game is tied at five. Tonight, the last team to score will win. Oh. Three deflections. What can you do with a quick grip handy clamp? And they should after the second goal of the game and the third of the season for David Lundbaum getting his third. Roach gets the only assist at even five minutes. The Gophers are just going to a power play. It's a slashing penalty on, uh, they're call it on Brian Lundbaum. I didn't see the infraction, but the Gophers have a power play. Chance to regain the lead. What a tilt this has been. Westrom knocks the puck out of the air, prevents a shorthanded opportunity for the fighting suit. Cole, a nice pass across to Westrom. Drops it back to Miskovic. Shallow angle, Cole the save, and he holds on. Maybe you would say that was a dangerous pass by Paul going cross rink, but he went across with authority. An update from ice level, Pat Micheletti. Well, Frank Reed, if you've noticed, Matt Lineback is out on this power play. And I talked to Don Lucia before the game and asked him, you know, what he's going to do on the power play. He said, well, we may insert Matt Lineback in there instead of Grant Patolny. Reason being, he handles the puck very well behind the net, and they're looking for that bang-bang pass from behind the net right out front for a goal. Frank Reed. Lineback with three goals in the five games he's played. There's Lineback with the puck. Spins away from Missouri. Gets it to Westrom. Down low to Lineback. Here's Pohl. A one-timer by Leopold, and it was tipped away by Spiewak, and then Pohl couldn't knock it out of the air. And it's back at center ice. Leopold had to prevent another short-handed break. Leopold. Lineback dumps it in. He took a punishing check from Missouri. Miskovich lays it around. Lineback knocked down. Missouri gets it out of there. The outlet pass from Hauser to Pohl. He gained the zone, he took the hit from Roach. Shallow angle, Miskovic. Tried to put it in front, that's intercepted by Hale. He gets it out of there. 13 minutes to go in regulation, a half minute on the power play. Back to pick it up, Minnesota's Jeff Tafe. A big night for him with a goal of two assists. Tafe bringing it in. Takes the hit in the corner, laid it around for Kowalska. Back to the point for Mills. Mills through the screen, but it hits Roach. And Panzer dumps it down the ring. Great job, great job, great job, great job killing this penalty, but the Gophers are still dangerous. They still have a little bit of time left. They better hurry. That is about to expire. Tate tried to make his move, but was kicked away. Out of the box, Lundbaum. I was at the save of the game. Tate took the shot from the point and carried him off a body, and it hopped right to Lundbaum out of the box. And Hauser made his second huge save of the game. Boy, what a bounce for North Dakota. Just at the end of the penalty, comes right out to guess who. Mr. Lombaum, who's been hotter than a... Difficult for a goalie. Adam was smart. He knew where he was going. He probably looked at his eyes. Got his legs closed in time. And uh, like you said, it's the save of the game. Shaking his head. Big weekend against the Pioneers. And he's picking up right where he left off. Corey, right up the middle, and Anthony is there to take it away. Weibel and Anthony. Nick Anthony. Shot, drop, pitch by Kohler. And now Anthony and Hammer. But that breaks up just as quickly. Frank, it's time to get organized again a little bit. A lot of penalties, a lot of things going on, and Don does a great job of, you know, jockeying players and lines and things like this, but again, that little 5-3 lead, you know, can be real comfortable into the third period, and up here in North Dakota, boy, it doesn't take long to change that around, and it did. When you, when you lose two players to injury in the middle of the game, and like you say, all the special team play, yeah. how much of the game plan goes out of the books? Oh, you just got to go on the fly. It gets really, really tough. I mean, that's, you have your penalty killers, your power play guys, but, uh, you know, it's, something that Don does very, very well. And again, they got through it. I mean, really, we've, we've had a tough time with penalties. Weibel, Anthony O'Leary up front for the Golden Gophers as it's played around by Missouri. 
Grab by Dory. Fakes it from the line, brings it in. Pat saved by Hauser, and he holds on. In a bit of traffic again in front. As the, the North Dakota paddle area is right out in front, number 11, you see him skate out of the picture. And every rush up ice becomes more important. Adam Hauser with a career high 44 saves a year ago against the Fighting Sioux at Mariucci Arena. It was a big night for him. It's important to stay confident, be aggressive. Again, don't, don't sit back on your heels. I mean, it's, you're going to end up playing in your zone the whole night, and a lot more shots will be on, on Adam Hauser. He's made a, enough good stops, I think, for the evening. So hope we give him a break and finish off with about 10 or 12 shots. We'll be all right. This one comes in on Hauser. He holds on again. An important game. Both the teams are playing their seventh conference game. The uh, Golden Gophers with a three-point lead over the Fighting Sioux. North Dakota has already lost two conference games, one at home to Michigan Tech, one on the road at Mankato. Gophers did a last job, good job after the faceoff clearing the front of the net that time. And I'm saying North Dakota does a great job going to the net, so it's very difficult to stop those guys. Westrom behind the net, his own net to get it up on the far side. Line back protected that puck, but Lundbaum still takes it away. That being uh, David Lundbaum. Mills throws it in the air. Nice play back of the blue line by David Hale. Roach filling, can't control it. Miskovich had it taken away. And every shift, there's puck to center and dumped down by linebacker. We got dumped behind the play. Did you see it? No, it was down below the crowd. You can't, can't see along the boards. There's Roach. They dump it in. Hands are after it. Martin and Leopold both jam up. Leopold ahead on the wing to Anthony. His pass hit a skate. And it's knocked out of the air by Tate. Deep Cloth took the hit from Tate. And Brian Lumbaugh for his own crease. And Nick Anthony nearly knocked it in. Tate in the corner coming hard. And out of center ice. Two men bring it to center. Lumbaugh bringing it in. Left side pass. Beta. Nice save by Hauser. Stood his ground and had that angle shut down. Sneak boss giving, uh, being given some pits there by Riddle. Martin after the puck. Hauser and Beta collide. No goaltender interference there. And the outlet to Tafe and now to Riddle and back to Tafe. He brings it in. The drop to Miskovic to the shot. And it's knocked away by Kohler. There's Miskovic again. Rolling in is Kowalska. Drops it into the corner. Sneak boss will go after the puck. And the Gophers begin to make a change halfway through the period. Tied up at five, we're in the third. Leopold dropping it back. A whistle goes with Minnesota in possession. It was called by an assistant ref. It may go against the Golden Gophers. We'll tell you about it after this timeout on MSC. This event ends Wednesday at Home Furniture. There's times, Frank, you know, when you talk about the refs and you have to call it like it is, and there's a prime example of John Tafe just being held, finally lets go. John gave him a little shot. He's still hanging on to his stick, and then you got a linesman. Jeff is just real frustrated. Jeff's real frustrated on that call. That, is, that was extremely marginal. I don't blame him either. I don't. Uh, if the AR is going to call something that the ref doesn't see out of that, he's got to call four minutes, two and two. Yeah. There's, there's a hold and a marginal cross check at best. Or a tent to injure or something really drastic. Yeah, that, our player was knocked down, interfered with in front of the net. Right in front of the net, Roach. Hauser's down. They work it to Missouri. The That's the second time tonight Minnesota has been caught in a retaliatory penalty. And it's the second time the Fighting Sioux have scored a power play goal. This one gives them a 6-5 lead. Well, here we go. This shot from the point, another deflection, probably the fourth one of the evening. And again, they get to the middle of the ice and, and let it go on the net. And I, you know, half the time you don't know if they're 
planning this or it's just an accident going off tonight, but the bottom line is they are in front of the net and they're not being knocked down. And it's and the Gophers are paying a price for it. Yeah. And they paid the price for that penalty, too. Here's Westrom shooting high. It bounces to Kowalska, and he tried to backhand it about a hop over his stick. And now to center ice. Spiewak chased outside. Save made by, Lee, by Hauser, and there's Westrom to grab it. Westrom to center ice with Patalny and Leopold. Westrom out of the corner. Leopold heading for the front of the net. Here's Leopold. He's playing as a forward on this line. Oh, Westrom with a huge interception at center. How did he do that? Interception on his on the backhand of his stick. He wasn't even looking. At the line, Mills can't hold his own. And they come back for it. The uh, goal is going to go to Missouri. Roach will get his fifth assist. Dory gets the other assist at 10:27. A shot knocked down. Kohler scoring. So is Paul. And the going is very tough here tonight. You want to skate a foot? You're going to have to earn it. Well, Spurt Hockey teams, we want you to submit your team photo for a chance to be selected as the MSC Let's Play Hockey Team of the Week. If chosen, your team will be featured in an MSC Go for Hockey broadcast and the Let's Play Hockey Magazine and TV show. Winning team photos will be posted on both the MSC and the Let's Play Hockey websites. Teams will receive T-shirts courtesy of Let's Play Hockey and MSC. Send it to the address on the screen. Back to the line, Mills, a screenshot, and it goes wide of the target. Panzer to pick it up. Relayed by Martin ahead, and Roach uh, played it ahead. Now grabbed by Panzer. Lundbaum brings it in. Lundbaum shakes a check. And Lundbaum puts it in the middle. Panzer alone. Hauser the save. Rebound batted for by Tafe. He got it out of there. Roach off the tip of his stick. Panzer in the crease. A goal. starting to hurt, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And the Gophers start to get back into it, get things going, and they start playing the body. But most of the evening, North Dakota's owned the front of our net. Beta's a strong forward. He's not the tallest, but he's stocky. He stood in front. Paul Martin had a tough time moving him out of there, and he just pounded home that rebound. And like I said, as soon as we start taking the body with authority, we get back into this game. But boy, we, the front of the net has killed us tonight. Travis Roach figuring in yet again his sixth assist. Miskovich, hammer for the fighting soon. Now Miskovich again right up the middle. It got away from linebacker all the way out of the zone. Angel back to get it. Turns away from a couple of checks. Here's Paul looking for Miskovich. Taken away by Dory. They flip it in again. Hauser leaving it behind the net. Now Angel spins it around, Ninovich scampering back for it. And now Miskovich to Angel. Hammer breaks up the rush. Cole goes cross, rake Ninovich. Out for Patoli and Missouri shuts him down. Line back in the corner, he is checked and then the puck is taken away. Brought back to center ice. Here's Eureko shooting it in. Hauser to play it away. A 12-goal hockey game. The Fighting Sioux with a two-goal lead for the second time. They led two to nothing in this one before Minnesota had a furious second period, scoring four unanswered. Here's Leopold to keep it in. And then it's back out to Westrom at center. Only six and a half minutes left to go in this one. And out to center ice. Hits the North Dakota line and never gained the zone. Leopold gets it again, throws it in the air to get in the zone. Roach controls it. Minnesota making some changes on the fly. This should be icing. And it is. We'll take a break. 
two-goal lead. Still anything can happen, but the Gophers are starting to run out of gas. Back in a moment. Here's our shell check of the game and the homecoming for Grant Patoli doesn't feel so good on this play. Oh! That's dangerous for oh, knee. That's... knee to knee. I thought it was going to be chest to chest there, but he survives the check of the game. Panzer, oh, right in front, and Lundbaum was stopped by Hauser, who was made despite giving up seven goals here. Some brilliant saves. Yeah, he hasn't had a lot of help. No, he has not. Well, the fighting Sioux and scoring chances are just clobbering the Gophers in this period, eight to one. And they're outscoring them as well. Four to nothing. Lundbaum forced off the puck by Mills. Angel ahead on the right side. Riddle stood up by Spiewak. Tate pelted by Hale on a check by Hale. Here comes Dory. Trying to get around Leopold. And Leopold runs him into the corner. Good defensive play there. Got the legs, be or the stick between the legs. Now Nenovich flattened Spiwak on the play. Miskovic, nice drop pass. Riddle got it in the middle. And the Sioux dig it out. Noterman. He's one on four, basically, as he shoots it in. He gets roughed up by Nenovich. Pole from behind the net under five minutes in regulation. The pass comes through to Miskovic, but he couldn't control it. Leopold and Pole. Boy, Leopold looks like he's getting double shifted. Once it forward and then back on D. He's having trouble getting off now. They drive it into the Minnesota end. Leopold behind the net. The last legs of this shift. He'll want to get off. The puck comes to Dory. The shot was blocked by Martin. Martin crosses center, dumps it in. Puck goes into the corner. Patoni in after the puck. Westrom couldn't hold his own. Two on one. Oh, Westrom just picked the pocket of Spiewak. Make that scarper route, actually, to give proper credit. And it's off the glass and down the rink. Hauser watches it and bats it away from Panzer. It hopped away from O'Leary. Martin with a pass to center. Nice drop pass by Patoli to Westrom. Westrom on the break. The, uh, the shot goes behind the net. Three on two, North Dakota. Brought in by Lundbaum. And now Beta puts it in the crew in the crease. That was in the air and came down right at Hauser's feet. Lineback. Nice play to O'Leary. Nurses it in past Roach. And then the puck goes into the corner. Coming up on almost three minutes left in the third period. Beta hit hard by Tate. Boy, is he playing a physical brand of hockey this year. Out to Miskovic. Hits the line, lets it go, and Kohler. Turned around and looked behind him just the last second. Now Miskovic. And he is wrapped up by Noterman. Dug out by Tate right in front. And the shot by Riddle goes to the corner. Leopold across the crease. Tate with it. Tees it up. Centers it. And it was rejected and taken away by Mazurik, who throws it down the rink. And the icing infraction is called. Ooh, a pretty intense 241 left. Gophers hoping for an early goal to get back on a roll. Uh, the six assists tonight by Roach ties at least a team record. Looks like it also ties a uh, league record. There's a record of six by, by Bill Himmelreich against Colorado College, and Doug Smale also had six against Michigan State. Those are both team records. I believe it also ties a league record. Which, of course, would be that same record there. Here's Scarperoo. Trying to force one in as the goal comes loose. Leopold hanging on for dear life, but Leopold's going to get a penalty for hooking. Ouch, 2.28 to go. Yeah. He gets down two goals, and uh, actually North Dakota, after they went up two goals, they changed their style drastically. They didn't chase down deep behind the goal line or behind the net and made it quite tough for the Gophers to mount any kind of attack. And 
with all those power plays and penalty killing and injuries, uh, you know, get tired and whoever ends up on top here the last down the last eight, ten minutes, it's tough yeah. at that time in the game. A little bit more on that record being tied by Travis Roach. This surprises me. 13 other players have that record in the WCHA. Six assists in a game. That's a lot. <laughs> and remember, we get seven. We're... Oh, well. He's got time here. The, uh, Hall of Fame. Here's Panzer. Forces the puck in the corner. And that W is looking bigger and bigger for the Fighting Sioux at the Gophers now. A man short on the ice. Here's Lundbaum behind the net. The Panzer. The Roach. The Panzer. Lundbaum in the corner. Met by Angel. Panzer to Beta. And this is the wrecking ball for this team. This is the guys that normally will score all the goals. And here's Lundbaum again. Back to the line for Roach. A wrist shot. Nice play by Hauser. He scoops it up and holds on. And this guy has been good, including tonight. Seven power play goals this season. And that leads the it leads Division One. Yeah, and he was quick to give Jeff Panzer a little credit too. I mean, he's playing with Jeff Panzer, yeah. makes quite a line. Ryan Beta. It's a good line, it's a good combination. Lundbaum now in for this face-off against Westrom. Mills. It's knocked down by the glove hand of Roach. And they're going to let time. I'm not sure who's to whose advantage this is. But the hand pass finally called by Mike Schmidt, the referee. And we will uh, have the face-off out of the zone. Not much question about this with the numbers he's built up tonight. Our ING Relia star of the game, Travis Roach, with a six assist tying a WCHA record. Well, and he mean, has just been one of the factors here tonight. Yeah, there's been they, many. They come in waves. And should also maybe mention that we've got a 12 goal game here. 11 of them has been scored at the end of the break to our right. I wonder if they're going to build a new arena tilted in the same at the same angle. <laughs> I was just kidding, but something's going on. Eh? Looks like two different teams. Well, the chant we heard last weekend at Mariucci Arena when the then number seven Gophers knocked off number two Wisconsin was overrated as the Badgers fell twice. The Gophers come into the building here, ranked number one, and now they're hearing the overrated chant. Paul hit at center ice as the one minute announcement is made. There's a half minute left in the penalty to Leopold. Westrom out at center ice, took a hit. Mills gets the puck, dumps it down the rink. Of course, no icing. Missouri and Pole after it. And behind the net, hammer to Missouri. Here's Angel. And dumped right back in by Noterman. The penalty to Leopold is over. And it looks like another streak will be held intact. The Gophers, in appearances here, ranked number one will now be winless in five games. As the celebration begins, the Fighting Sioux will have knocked off the number one Golden Gophers with a huge third period rally here. Cole, maybe one more shot. Nope. The buzzer goes as the save is made by Kohler and North Dakota. Seven to five victors with a huge third period. Four unanswered goals, a total of six unanswered goals after Minnesota had a 4-2 lead. Well, Frank, you know what? It's the only can be faulted, I think, where we lost the game was right down in front of our net. Yeah. First period and third period. We just got to clean up the slot area and, and keep people out of there. And, you know, really, I can't fault Adam Hauser. Right? He made some key stops, especially on some breakaways. Pretty sloppy, I think, yeah. compared to what the Gophers are used to playing. And uh, I think they'll, you know, definitely make a change for tomorrow night. And uh, just for the record here, it's a, it's a string of four unanswered goals by the Fighting Sioux all in this period. Tonight's 
John Paul had the last goal of the second period. Badgers lost. And in overtime, Michigan Tech beats Minnesota Duluth 5-4. to four. For those two very low-scoring teams, they put the puck in the net. We'll have a break. We'll come back with a post-game show after this timeout on MSC, your college hockey connection. Got a few bonuses. Worked really hard and, uh, you know, came up with two points, which is huge for us. And, uh, you know, it gets us kind of ready for the weekend and, you know, looking forward to tomorrow. Strange game tonight. You guys come out flying in the first period. The Gophers pretty much handle the second period. What did Dean say to you going into the third period? Well, it's one of those things where, you know, we gave up 21 shots and five goals in the second period there. And, you know, that's not a character of our team. We, uh, we usually play pretty tight checking defense. But we, like I said, we knew we just want to come back, battle hard, and, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, get something going, at least some momentum for tomorrow. And we came out, and like I said, got some bounces, and, uh, you know, we're going to try to cut that second period out and hopefully have a good game tomorrow. It seemed like what you guys really did well tonight was get to the net. And then on the flip side, not allow Minnesota to get to the net, uh, especially in that third period. Yeah, you know, we, we knew we wanted to get uh, get shots on Hauser. He's a great goalie, but you get traffic in front, and uh, it's tough for him to stop the puck. So we put as much traffic to the net as we could and uh, try to eliminate those, those guys from getting to the net. They got great skill and uh, you give them time, they're going to score goals. So we've tried to tighten up defensively, and in the third period, it did a good job. Well, great game tonight, and a uh, big win. We'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you very much. All right, that's Jeff Panzer, Frank, and uh, what a game he had, and, and the fighting Sioux also. Let's go back up to you. Thanks, Mick, for our Menard's last word. Jeff Panzer, he certainly is one of those guys that makes college hockey such a fun game to watch when you've been beaten by Jeff Panzer and company, you've been beaten by a really good team. Yeah, they worked very, very hard, and it was a very entertaining game, and up and down, and we just ended up on the short end, and I think we were, it was a little sloppy start and a little sloppy ending, so uh, they have to come back tomorrow ready to go, and, and the Gophers have plenty of talent. I know they have some injuries, but definitely can win in this building. I thought they had it, but you got to finish off 60 minutes. Uh, both Eric Wendell and Ben Tharp didn't play most of the game due to injuries in the first period. If you mention that, are you making an alibi? Is that an excuse? Well, no, I think anytime you combine those kinds of injuries and all those penalties, uh, it gets tough and it wears on your team. And if you happen to be on the short end of the stick, two goals down with 10 minutes to go, neither team had a lot left. One can sit back and, you know, just play defense. The other one has to try and push and it's just like, you know, running uphill. And uh, I'm sure they got very, very tired at the end, so. One of the other good things about WCHA hockey as you lace them up you do it again tomorrow night and that's what will happen here at Ralph Engelstead Arena the Golden Gophers and the Fighting Sioux in game two of this weekend matchup and we'll have it for you here of course on MSC starting at 730 don't forget the sports connection show as well at seven o'clock so a couple of explosive teams the Gophers had four unanswered in the second period the Fighting Sioux four unanswered in the uh, third they wind up winning it North Dakota does by a final seven to five. Coming up next, Bemidji State against River Falls. Great action in the WIAC NSIC border battle. You'll see it on MSC, your ultimate sports connection. See you tomorrow night.